Boeing, once a towering giant in the aerospace industry, is now drowning in a deep crisis, its reputation seemingly beyond repair due to the crushing failure of the Starliner mission. But nothing happens without reason. Today's failure is merely the outcome of a series of missteps by the leaders of this behemoth. Musk, a masterful engineer and astute investor, grasps the underlying insights behind these failures more clearly than anyone, and he's not afraid to call them out. Let's find out in today's episode. I've got a question about Starliner, Wilmore said. There's a strange noise coming through the speaker. I don't know what's making it. Mission Control replied. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. It seems like there's something new going on with the Starliner, a strange sound that astronauts picked up on. Right after this sound was shared, this peculiar noise quickly went viral on social media, sparking widespread concern and wild speculation within the space community. Veteran astronaut Chris Hadfield, who has completed three space missions, shared the audio clip on X with the comment, There are several noises I'd prefer not to hear inside my spaceship, including this one that Abar Boeing Starliner is now making. In response, Musk replied with a single exclamation mark. The fact that this sound came through the speaker suggests it wasn't generated by the Starliner itself. For instance, if a big helium leak occurred, it would produce a hissing noise, and if an alarm, it would trigger something like a beeping sound from the spacecraft systems. However, this noise resembled an echo, something you'd hear if you shouted into a wide, empty canyon and heard your own voice bounce back. In this case, the sound was shorter, rhythmic, and more consistent. Honestly, it's pretty eerie. What's more alarming is that when reporters and media outlets reached out for comments, Boeing redirected all inquiries to NASA. Boeing had no idea what was happening at the time. They don't fully understand their own product. Do you know why Boeing is in this situation? It's because they lack leadership with a deep understanding of engineering. Musk has pointed out, that even at the leadership level, Boeing is suffering from a shortage of individuals with the right technical expertise and vision. Too many non-technical managers at Boeing. This shift can be traced back to 1997, when Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas. Since then, Boeing gradually shifted its focus from prioritizing customer satisfaction and product quality to chasing profits and shareholder value. This change has been simmering for years, and the recent problems are just the latest eruption. From a business perspective, it seems Boeing no longer considers safety as the top priority. This is precisely why the Starliner is currently plagued by a series of failures. Aerospace engineers worth their salt always emphasize the importance of understanding how different components of a spacecraft interact with each other, as well as with the space environment and the International Space Station, ISS. These interactions are incredibly complex and difficult to test under Earth's conditions. To ensure safety and effectiveness, a spacecraft project typically undergoes thousands of hours of integrated testing and simulation. These tests are crucial for identifying and resolving potential issues before the spacecraft is launched into orbit. This step is absolutely vital because once the spacecraft leaves Earth, the ability to intervene and fix problems is severely limited and there aren't many options left. However, Boeing's top brass didn't seem to grasp this. In previous press briefings, Boeing representatives revealed that the Starliner was launched without undergoing any complete integrated testing. This decision flies in the face of the most fundamental principles in spacecraft development, and as a result, the entire project is now teetering on the edge of disaster. Beyond neglecting proper testing protocols, Boeing's leadership made another critical mistake in how they view product quality. The company began to see quality assurance, QA, and quality control, QC, departments as cost centers that needed to be cut back rather than as key elements for ensuring the safety and integrity of their a prime example is the 2019 plan to slash around 900 quality inspectors at its Seattle area factories, replacing them with technological advancements. While Boeing argued that automation would reduce human error and improve efficiency, the decision sparked fierce controversy, especially as it was made after the wake of the 737 MAX crashes. To understand Boeing's approach to product safety, let me share this with you. In February 2024, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, released a critical report titled Review Panel's Final Report on Organization Designation Authorizations, ODA, for the design and production of airplanes. The report's main conclusion was that Boeing has made little progress in improving its safety culture since the catastrophic 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019, which claimed 346 lives. This is a particularly damning finding. The report highlighted gaps in Boeing's safety journey and described the company's safety culture as inadequate 
and confusing. One especially shocking discovery was shared by Tracy Dillinger, a safety culture and human factors manager at NASA. In a survey we reviewed, 95% of respondents did not know who the safety director was. Adding to this, 250 interviews conducted by the FAA with Boeing employees revealed that not all were clear on the company's safety management system. Many didn't know how to report safety concerns or whom to report them to, highlighting a serious failure in training and internal communication on critical safety processes. There's little doubt that Boeing's spacecraft division operates under similar dysfunction. Elon Musk's tweet seemed to indirectly call out David L. Calhoun, who has been Boeing's CEO since January 2020. Calhoun, with a background in accounting and business, appears to be the architect of some of the company's most disastrous decisions in recent years. Under his leadership, Boeing outsourced the production of many aircraft and spacecraft components to global suppliers, focusing primarily on cost savings. In this model, Boeing's role has been reduced to little more than assembling the final product. While this strategy may lower short-term production costs, it introduces significant risks to product safety. Boeing signed long-term contracts with these suppliers, guaranteeing that they would be the sole providers of certain parts throughout the program's duration. The suppliers offered low prices in exchange for these long-term contracts and exclusive rights. However, once suppliers know they are the sole source with a long-term contract, they have little incentive to improve quality or delivery speed. This can lead to subpar parts or delays in supply. Moreover, because Boeing isn't directly involved in manufacturing these components, it lacks comprehensive understanding and cannot ensure consistent quality across thousands of components sourced from different companies. Boeing's challenges, particularly with the Starliner project, have reached an unprecedented level of severity in the company's history. The repeated failures of Starliner aren't just technical issues. They reflect deep-seated problems within Boeing's management structure and business strategy. This is exactly what led to Starliner's downfall. The situation has become so dire that Boeing seems barely capable of managing this crisis, and Calhoun has officially stepped down. However, there's a glimmer of hope with the appointment of Kelly Ortberg as Boeing's new CEO. Ortberg, with 35 years of aerospace experience and a solid technical background, is expected to bring positive changes to the company. Even Elon Musk has acknowledged this shift, stating, the new Boeing CEO is spending time in the factories. That's exactly what needs to be done. Hopefully, this change is part of a genuine effort to reform Boeing, focusing on returning to core values of engineering and quality, rather than making Ortberg a scapegoat to clean up the mess left behind by Calhoun. Let's hope the new CEO can reignite the ambitious vision that Dennis Muhlenberg had, the one he never got to fulfill because he was fired in the wake of the 737 MAX disasters. His dream was to beat SpaceX in the race to Mars. And it's hard to believe that the challenge between the two companies started seven years ago. Well, sometimes it takes looking at a competitor's failures to truly appreciate just how well SpaceX has performed over the years. Elon Musk has set an extraordinary standard of personal commitment to his work. Tales of him sleeping on factory floors and working tirelessly have become legendary in the industry. Sure, it might seem like he spends all day on X, but trust me, he knows exactly what every single bolt on his products is for. What really sets SpaceX apart is its empowerment of engineers. Unlike the cumbersome management structures typical of traditional aerospace companies, SpaceX fosters an environment where engineers are encouraged to voice their ideas and bring creative solutions to life. They also understand the critical importance of controlling their supply chain and manufacturing processes. The company has embraced vertical integration, designing and producing most of the components used in its rockets and spacecraft. For instance, SpaceX developed its own Merlin and Raptor engines, bucking the industry trend of purchasing engines from specialized suppliers. This decision has allowed the company to continuously improve engine performance and reduce production costs. But there's one thing I genuinely hope for, that SpaceX won't face unreasonable challenges from the media and regulatory bodies. Elon Musk once tweeted, Hardly anyone knows that there was a massive effort to block SpaceX from providing astronaut transport for NASA. It seems there's a troubling trend where some media outlets exaggerate any negative news about SpaceX, often before the information is fully verified, leading to unnecessary interventions from relevant organizations. A recent and clear example of this is the FAA's decision to delay public hearings on SpaceX's proposal to increase launch frequency at Starbase to 25 times per year. This delay appears to be based on a controversial article by a journalist lacking expertise in the aerospace industry. Is it competition? Politics? It's hard to say for sure. Let's hope this situation ends soon, allowing a healthy environment for companies to thrive and innovate. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.